The Lowrider ST handles closer to an FXR than a Dyna. Let's talk about it. All right, what's going on YouTube? FX DLS Brooklyn is back in the building. Should I say FX LR ST Brooklyn is back in the building as we peel through the most dangerous roundabout in Long Island. You got me getting uh, continuing a little ride with the old man who is on the 2001 Dyna Superglide Sport, whereas myself, I am on my Lowrider ST 2023 White Sand Pearl. And look, I know, I know a lot of you want more of the Lowrider ST content, especially some of the content of me actually riding the bike. So I figured today I would do that justice. So look, I know my FXR people, I am one of them. You all know I own an FXR. I have a significant amount of miles on an FXR. I am passionate about that bike. Always have been, right? I know some people from the FXR community are definitely going to, are definitely gonna call me a knucklehead on this one, or definitely gonna tell me that I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. So I'm prepared for that in the comments section, right? But I also, what I will say is I have plenty of friends who are super passionate about their FXRs and did also buy a Lowrider ST. And I wanna tell you the reason why that is. So with all my content, right, I am most known for my miles on the Dyna platform, right? So the Superglide Sport up there, obviously my FX DLS. That's what I'm known for. That's what my channel started about. That's predominantly the most amount of miles I lay down in a year is on the Dyna platform. So most people who are seeing the new ST videos are asking me, how does it perform to the Dyna? Because a lot of people are in the market for either a late to early year Dyna or a lowrider ST. Let's just be real. To run an FXR and to do the FXR thing is a very different commitment. You know, it's just not as easy and not as accessible as it is to run a Dyna or obviously run something modern like what I'm on right now. And I have enough miles on the Lowrider SD at this point between the one that Harley Davidson sent me in the fall as well as the one that I currently own right now as a result of the miles that I put on the one that Harley sent me. So in terms of performance, here's the thing that you might not expect. And I also cannot explain why this is. The reason why I love doing YouTube is there's always going to be someone in the comments or there's always going to be people who subscribe here that know a lot more and are way more knowledgeable about this stuff than I am. So I always end up learning some new stuff. So I'm kind of hoping that I get that from this video. But the short, to get straight to the point, I know, um, yeah, I'm probably like four minutes in and I'm just yapping about this and that. To get to the point of what I'm trying to talk about is the Lowrider ST feels way more like an FXR handling wise than it does to a Dyna. And I can't tell you why that is. I do not know why that is. But all I can tell you is I have a lot of miles on the FXR platform, and obviously I have a lot of miles on the Dyna platform, and yeah, it, it just, like, when I'm on this bike, it just feels closer performance and handling-wise to what an FXR feels like. And what I mean by that is it has that pep, right? The best way I can describe it is it has the pep of an FXR, and it has the tightness of an FXR in terms of handling, right? You know, before the ST came out, that's why I love my FXR because it just had, it just, the FXR platform just has this really tight feel to it, especially when you're cornering, especially when you're maneuvering. The ST also achieves that feeling where it just feels really tight, right? Really tight when you're throwing it around corners, when you're just running it in general. Whereas the Dyna, you all know the situation, like the Dyna is notorious for the Dyna wobble. Um, obviously my Dyna Lowrider S, you know, there's no Dyna wobble. That, that bike is the smoothest Dyna I've ever ridden. But the ST in terms of actually just like cornering and like moving around, it just feels tighter, you know? And again, I know that has to do with the geometry of the frame. I know that has to do with the Monoshock technology. I know that has to do with the Milwaukee 8. I think the combination of all those things is what gives it that feel where again, I, I feel like it just feels closer to an FXR than it does to a Dyna. So at the 
end of the day, as we are blasting down this highway, I know people generally watch these videos who are people who are in the market for a new bike and wondering, is the SD worth it? And again, if <laughs> This will probably also draw its own separate amount of heat, but if you're someone that's in between a Lowrider ST and a Dyna, I'm gonna tell you to hands down, go with a Lowrider ST or a Lowrider, or a Milwaukee 8 Lowrider S. Because again, the handling that you get out of the box and just how tight this bike feels, and the other thing I forgot to mention of why to me it just feels closer to an FXR is the fact that you point this bike and it goes. Like, it just rides so true, you know? It, like, straight as an arrow, man, wherever you point it. So, that's why, you know, I'll tell you, to answer the question of comparing it to another model that I ride, it's closer to an FXR. And that's, uh, and that's coming from somebody, again, that has the miles on both, on all three platforms. But as the road captain apparently wants to rip down, <laughs> apparently wants to be moving down this parkway today, I'm going to leave it off at that, at that. If you're someone that has miles on all three platforms, I would love to hear what you think about this topic because again, you know, I'm not an expert by any means, I'm just an idiot that has a lot of miles on all these bikes. But you all let me know in the comment section, what do you think? I'm going to continue my ride with the old man here. As always, stay safe and stay low. Ride FXRs, ride Dynas, ride Lowrider SDs. And on that, FX Skills Brooklyn is out.